Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. I hope uh, uh, you're all well. Uh, I'm Inigo Serrano. I'm head of business development and marketing at uh, Bquant. And first of all, thank you for attending uh, this webinar today. We're going to talk about bandwidth management and TCP optimization uh, with presenting our, our solution. And the presentation will be given by Mr. Jose Lopez. He is the CEO of Bquant. It will take about 30 minutes, his presentation. And after that, there will be a question and answer session. You can leave uh, your questions on, on through the application. And well, we'll be ready to, to answer them after the, the, the you, you give it to us. So please uh, welcome uh, Jose Lopez. Jose, you can start whenever you're ready. OK, thank you, Inigo. So um, we're going to present our product. Uh, and to show how we can uh, help people that uh, operate networks, how we optimize those networks. And when we say we optimize, we mean three things. Uh, we accelerate uh, the, those networks, which means that we increase the speed that the users will experience in that network. And that we do with TCP optimization. Then with analytics, we show what is flowing through that network, uh, which services are most used and which uh, users uh, use the network the most. And that we do with a deep packet inspection technology. And uh, finally, we, we through uh, our bandwidth uh, management uh, technology, the function functionality, we can limit the speed of certain applications at certain times maybe when there is congestion and for certain uh, users of the network maybe some uh, users in some sector of the network which is especially congested for for instance so but, but let me go over each one of these three functionalities and explain exactly what they do so the first one when we see that we uh, when we say we accelerate we increase the speed experience by the network users which is not the same as the speed of the network. Very often, uh, a network may have a, a capacity. Let's suppose uh, someone has a network connection. And that network connection can uh, go at uh, 10 megabits per second. But if that person is using some video streaming like Netflix, for example, and Netflix is sending uh, the streaming at 5 megabits per second, then five is what this uh, user will think uh, he, uh, he has and not 10 uh, because people will relate to what the, the, the applications actually use. And it's very common that applications as we will show will uh, use less of the bandwidth than is actually available. So what we do is to uh, allow the speed experienced by the user to be closer to what the network actually can actually support. And so um, in that example, it uh, would be mean uh, letting uh, Netflix or whichever application uh, send at a speed closer to the 10 megabits per second instead of sending at five, for instance. And so, the, okay, so the, the next question, of course, is why would Netflix or any other application send at five when it, it is possible to send at 10. Okay, and the answer is uh, is in transport protocols because the transport protocols are piece of software uh, that resides both in the server and in the client in any connection. Okay, uh, but uh, especially one on the server is apart from many other things, it decides at every moment at what speed to send. And that's not an easy task because in the path for instance from a data center to the final user there are many hops and each hop has a maximum uh, a capacity a maximum speed and so the uh, locally for instance in the data center there may be there may be a connection at 10 gigabits per second but the server has to realize that it is not 10 megabits per second that it can use because if it's uh, sorry 10 gigabits per second because if it's sent at 10 gigabits and one of the hops, usually the final hop, is limiting at 10 megabits per second, then it would just swamp this user. But if it sends at less than 10, uh, it would 
be using less of the capacity that is actually available. So the um, what they do, uh, these transfer protocols, all of them, TCP is the most important, but uh, UDP and all, all transfer protocols have to uh, basically explore, see what is the capacity. So they usually start from a lower speed, go up, ramp up until they see they reach the optimum. Now in getting to that optimum, they usually, what happens is that normally, uh, it's, especially when there are wireless hops in a, a wireless part of the link and or if there are packet losses or if there's uh, the delays there are large delays then they will often um, as they ramp up uh, and are uh, approaching the optimal speed they will stop ramping up before getting to the optimal speed and start sending then at a lower speed and that is because they confuse the the variability, the packet losses that there may be in that network with uh, congestion, with having reached the optimal speed. And we uh, can help in those situations with TCP, which is, as I say, uh, the majority of the network uh, traffic. And so how do, do we help? We, uh, we have our product is uh, an appliance. It's actually a software that runs on an off-the-shelf commercial server. And it is placed in the path of the network, in line. So traffic has to flow through it. And then what is uh, not TCP, we just forward. Uh, we also analyze and do other things, but in this part, uh, we don't accelerate. We cannot accelerate that, but the TCP part, then we will optimize. And when we say we optimize, what we do is something uh, that is based on what is called transparent TCP proxy. And this is a functionality that has been used for very long time. Uh, for instance, satellite networks have been using this for uh, 20 years. And uh, also large carriers like AT&T or Verizon in the US, th those large wireless carriers uh, have been using this uh, technology for a very long time. What we have done is to make this technology that has been used in more most advanced networks and that is fairly expensive, I must say. I must say uh, we have taken that functionality and made it available for um, smaller networks. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, so, but I, we think that it is a very advanced technology that benefits these. That's why those large networks use it. So let us explain. Uh, the, how what the, what it means to be a transparent TCP proxy, and, and you will see why this is something. It's not magic. We can get more out of a network if we use a transparent TCP proxy. So, how does it work? Let's imagine we have two servers here, and they want to send seven packets. This is just an example. So, in TCP, we will do it in rounds, like first one, then two, then four. This is the way that it probes the capacity of the link. Okay, and so let's imagine that there are these two clients on the left, and when they get the packets right, they send an acknowledgement back. Okay, this uh, like this uh, another packet saying, okay, I got this right, so you can send me more. So on, to, on the top, we'll imagine we have a direct path without any transparent TCP proxy, and in the on the bottom, we will put one. And this is a five second uh, and delay so that we can see the packets uh, as we do this. Okay, we are somewhere in between. And we will be counting packets as they reach the server. And you'll see why we can optimize things. And the key is that when we get the first packet, any packet, uh, we will send an acknowledgement as if we were the final client. So when this acknowledgement packet reaches the server, then it says, okay, I send the second round. And this second round, we will store together with the first one uh, as in a buffer that we keep for every TCP connection. So now when the real acknowledgement comes from the client, we can now send this second round. And for instance, in this case, we have a gain four seconds over the path on top. And we'll gain four seconds for every round after the, after the first one. Same thing with the third round. We already have it when it comes, the acknowledgement comes to us. So the, the seven packets have reached the uh, customer, in, in this case, the client, in 17 seconds. And the top will be four and four, eight seconds more, 25 seconds. So um, this is, of course, just an example, a special, uh, but you can see why having this, the key, why this optimizes, because the key is that we are getting the traffic a, a little ahead of time, um, because usually on the right, on the internet side, 
you have a better connection and so you can go a little faster as we are going here and so you have already the data in your network so the end customer starts feeling as if the data is actually residing in your network so it is closer and because when it sends an acknowledgement it gets the data back earlier and so it's exactly the same as having it closer and so having it closer means having it faster in, a, in any acknowledged communication like tcp and not only just having it's only you can see that uh, what advantages you have uh, in this case but imagine that there were any kind of packet losses between these two points if you in that case um, well tcp in general has no problem with this, uh, um, uh, lost uh, tcp packets because in those acknowledgement packets it sends information about which packets are missing so uh, the server can retransmit them but now we will retransmit them because we already have them in the buffer and so uh, if they are retransmitted from closer there it is much faster so this is a second mechanism with through which we accelerate and the third mechanism why we accelerate um, has to, uh, has to do with the tcp the actual because when we send out those packets that we have in our buffer uh, we there we use standard tcp but we have modified uh, the tcp algorithms for deciding when uh to what's the optimum speed because in this game this thing about going one two four eight and deciding where when to stop ramping up and sending and when to send at that speed we have a better algorithm that we have developed over time and we have patented and uh, this algorithm does not get confused as standard tcp does uh, and in case of uh, packet losses or in case of uh, 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 any latency issues, we will not get confused as much as uh, standard TCP and we will end up sending at a uh, higher speed, uh, closer to the optimal speed. So, um, how do we see all this? Well, we see, sorry, uh, we see all this uh, in this, uh, versus in this uh, slide. It has a lot of numbers, let me explain. This is, shows you how much faster we are in networks then uh, without uh, how much faster those networks can be with us compared to without us. How do we get those numbers? Um, the, we are, our um, products used in commercial service in over 100 networks uh, worldwide. Um, but here it's, uh, is uh, data from 12 of those networks. Whenever we are in a network uh, and we are optimizing the, those, the, all the TCP connections in that network, we always leave a small percentage, 1% of TCP connections at random, uh, uh, chosen at random, without any optimization. We just let them go through, some uh, very few of them, but we measure them and we measure the rest, of course. And then we compare so that we can compare at what speed those, the, uh, no, uh, those uh, downloads are happening without us and with us. And now in this graph, we have also concentrated and so that it's more comparable. This is all data from um, downloads from Netflix. There's nothing uh, special about Netflix, just we use it a lot in our examples because it is one of the um, contents the uh, that is used the most around the world, but uh, not in every country, it's true. And, but it's, uh, for us, it's the same, any TCP download, okay? Uh, but in any case, in this uh, with Netflix, this is average speed over a week in those 12 networks with us in red, without us in gray. So for instance, if we go to the th uh, fourth, uh, for instance, this uh, wireless ISP, as you can see, there are cable ISPs, there's um, MNO, this is a LT uh, network with uh, 2.5 million subscribers. Um, this is, uh, there are fiber ISPs, uh, cable, all kinds. Uh, but in this wireless ISP, for instance, um, the average speed of these Netflix downloads was 2.5 um, megabits per second. Okay, it could be, there's a lot of variability because it's a, a week of traffic, but this is average. And without the connections, without optimization is 1.04 megabits per second. So this network allowed the uh, downloads to go at an average of 2.5, but Netflix on average was sending at 1.04. So it was not using all the capacity that this, ne this network allowed because this network was exactly the same, but it's just with us or without us. So now this network 
feels much faster for any user because if at, on average it's going uh, uh, twice as much uh, in speed, then the, the Netflix it will have, uh, the, or the video streaming will have fewer stalls, it will go higher resolution, so the uh, customer satisfaction will be much higher because in the end, uh, customers uh, care the most about the speed of um, nowadays. Video streaming is one of the key um, uh, applications, and so we help a lot with that. But we also help with not just video streaming, but any technology that uses TCP, which is also uh, news browsing, almost everything, I would say. So this is uh, therefore what we can do in the terms of accelerating traffic. Okay, well, just to show you that it's not magic, we are using some sound um, technology. Uh, now, uh, we uh, can also offer you, since we are in the path and traffic is flowing through us, of your, all the traffic from your network is flowing through us, we can show you what services are you being used. And so we can identify them. And for instance, this is a, one network that is using this, is a fairly large ISP. This node is handling 14 gigabits per second at top time. This is three hour, three days of traffic, okay? And so it's going up to 14 gigabits uh, peak hour and um, around two gigabits uh, at night. And so, for instance, this is the an Italian uh, operator. These are the services they, that are used the most, uh, for instance, at 10 p.m. certain day. Uh, well, 11, it was going at 15.2 gigabits per second at that time. 11.6 percent was YouTube. 8.3% was Netflix, and well, these are the services. So we give you this information, and you can sometimes uh, uh, use this to your advantage, because you can see which is, uh, for instance, decide on which peering is better for your network and based on the amount of uh, traffic of different applications. And uh, we can also show you this as an aggregate, of course, not just a daily, uh, hourly usage, and then we can also analyze it another way. Instead of looking at the services that use the network the most, we now can use look at which users are using this network the most. So for instance, we can show all the users and here for instance, show you in this network, the, in these three days, which are the uh, 20 users or 30 users that use the network the most. And so for instance, see that uh, that time this, uh, this uh, user was uh, going at 12.9. So it looks like this user, when it starts using the network, it's using all at uh, 12, uh, 12 uh, 13. Maybe it's probably a network where there is some um, quality of service, some limitation. They are limiting the plan is limiting to around 13 megabits per second or 15. And so these users use the connection to the full limit uh, when they connect. And so you can sometimes uh, try to see problems, if uh, a problem, uh, diagnose problems in your network with this functionality, if some user has problems, you can see here at what speed it was receiving or not at certain times, okay? So, and this is about uh, analytics, showing you what is the user in your network. And the final functionality that we have is um, bandwidth management, which means that we can set a um, speed limit here, for instance, it's, uh, uh, for uh, we can uh, let me show you if we go here. Um, this is uh, the um, we can set for instance um, decide that uh, we want to limit the video streaming applications, and we will select. The, here is uh, how which applications are going to be limited. You can you don't need to know these uh, domains that we actually look see in the traffic. These, uh, we have uh, predefined signatures, so you can choose video streaming, whatever applications. And then, so you first select what, um, what uh, applications to limit, then you select at what speed you want to limit. For instance, this is four megabits per user. So this means that this user, this IP address for us, will have a limit of four megabits per second for these applications. If it has, for instance, a plan for 10 megabits per second, then all the uh, streaming applications uh, together will not go at faster than four, okay? And the rest will be reserved for whatever other uh, uh, use, uh, usage it may be having. The other applications will not be limited. 
and then you can do this just for a few users in your network for instance these are would be the uh, the users with this range of ip address uh, so or with this vlan tag and then finally you can also limit when all this will happen this limitation and maybe you can have imagine you have a network where the whole network uh, goes at peak time at one gigabit per second so you can do it so that uh, you only um, apply these limits when you reach 800 megabits per second so at 80 percent so you only apply these limits when your network is closer to the its highest peak value maybe closer to congestion situation okay so um this is in summary what we do just lim uh, limit the speed of uh, certain applications to a certain speed for certain users at a certain time and you can have several policies okay the, you can select this for certain users this limit for certain applications this limit certain times this limit well you you can have a lot of flexibility there so this is all um I'm here for instance is um an experiment where we did just to show you how much you can gain we did in a, this experiment which was in one of our customers for a period of four days we did a four megabit uh, four megabit per second uh, limitation for video streaming per user but only for the video streaming okay and uh, we did it so that uh, we had a, sc a script so that at um, even times you we had this uh, this um, limitation odd times we didn't have any limitation and that we just measure the the amount of traffic to the network uh, during those times so this is the graph here on the left on the bottom and so you can see how the whole that when the even hours the traffic which was uh, lower especially at peak times and this it was lower by around 15 percent on average and uh, so this is to show how much just by limiting certain applications how uh, video streaming you can limit uh, you can um, reduce the peak traffic of your network and this can help if you're reaching saturation levels like more recently is uh, happening all over the world at least with all the confinement and uh, these uh, 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 sorry situation in which we are all around the world with uh, people having to be at home and using the internet much more for many, uh, many things so uh, just to help this is just a tool for certain times maybe this is a time where when this can help you because if you limit video streaming video streaming is an application that if you limit it it will adapt and it will of course yeah the resolution may be a little lower but they are very uh, usually very intelligent clients they will and in the end the customers um uh, i mean you're, you're rich in any case a congestion so this if you limit this you're not limiting other applications which suffer much more when you reduce the speed because other applications do not adapt to uh, reductions in in, uh, in available speed and for instance they will just take much longer or they will uh, if they have um uh, well they, they will in in many cases be uh, much worse affected so this is a, a way in which for, uh, how to share the available speed in a better way and we not only in fact do, reducing the uh the, the speed of the streaming has another benefit it can reduce the latency uh, the latency we were also measuring the latency this network we saw that it was reduced by about five milliseconds and this happens because video streaming adapts as we, we were saying and so if it has more uh, more uh, avail bandwidth available it will use it all of it and by using all of it uh, many times it will uh, fill up all the buffers on in the path and this creates a latency so if you limit it you don't have this effect and you get a reduced latency which is good for um applications like online gaming or voice over ip so the advantage of course there are other uh, applications that can do this quality of service let's say uh, we have uh, certain advantages for instance we do this without dropping any um, packets because on the tcp part when we do this limitation we can with those, those acknowledgement packets that i was showing at the beginning those uh, carry information about lost packets but also about the window that uh, how much faster uh, how, how fast the server can send so by sending the appropriate numbers that we do there we can just have the source 
sending at the avail uh, the required speed. So do this limitation without dropping any packets. And we do this at the same time. Uh, we work it. Uh, we do TCP optimization. So we are at the same time optimizing TCP traffic, but uh, we are optimizing it and. Uh, for, for instance, for the slower connections, we may, if, if, if we have this limit at four megabits per second, uh, for instance, the connections going at one megabit, we, we can still uh, optimize and get them to flow at two megabits per second, for, for example. But a connection that's already going at 3.5, for instance, we will not get to seven. It will, at most, go at four. So we are helping the most uh, disadvantages, uh, disadvantaged uh, connections, uh, but while at the same time limiting those connections that might be, maybe would get a lot of uh, good resolution and uh, high speed, but then overall the network is much better if you limit uh, some of those connections and make that uh, uh, bandwidth available to the rest. And we also think that it is uh, easy to configure and that the, our pricing is very competitive. So we, uh, as uh, this is all regarding the functionality. So how do we work here? Uh, we are a software. We we provide you a software that is installed, you have to get um, uh, a, a server, an off-the-shelf server, uh, depending on the uh, throughput of your network, we will advise you what can, but we need very, no, we don't need any very powerful computers at all. For instance, just as an example, we use these off-the-shelf uh, super micro servers often, and when, and these are, for instance, this is uh, the, the more basic Xeon uh, chip uh, uh, CPU, and it can reach 10 gigabits per second. Or uh, we can also even reach uh, 50 gigabits per second in just one box, one one U box. So we can work and, and tell you, for instance, that you know, uh, up to uh, one gigabit, it'll uh, go. Uh, you need just an i5, i7. Yeah, even for lower, some people have used i3 computer. It's a very basic uh, um, um, hardware, really. You just need, of course, uh, three, uh, well, as I'll say, uh, a few uh, network ports, of course, and then and depending on the on the speed of your network, we will advise you what kind of CPU is available. Then we send software. The software is like an, uh, it's an ISO. You install it the same way that you install, for instance, a Linux distribution, because it's actually a Linux distribution that we have created. And then when you install it, it's already there, configured, and uh, very easy to just, uh, it's uh, really a plug and play thing. Um, so how do you deploy? It's also easy because we work we, you put us in the network, but we work at level two. So we everything like a bridge. Everything that comes through one port, it'll go out the other port. Just uh, so there's no IP addressing required or anything like that. We were it's like a wire th going through us, and it can be just not one. You can have several, several links going through us transparently. You can even have a, like an aggregate link going through us. Um, some our customers do that. Okay, then you need so you need basic minimum of two ports, one for one side towards your customers or subscribers, the other one towards the internet. Then you need um, another uh, an IP address here, one an, an extra port, so minimum of three uh, Ethernet ports. This third one is just a more standard one. We just need an IP, we do need an IP address there because this is where you will, um, we connect to our node and configure and see the results. Okay, it's a, a graphical user interface. Uh, and and then often it, it, we we will set up a bypass link. Uh, if you're using like MicroTik routers or switches, it's like a, um, a active backup. Well, any way that you would in a net, normal network have protect one link that's very critical and you have another one in case it fails, same thing you can do with us. Okay, so uh, we will also advise if you want to do this because we have uh, done this in several uh, customers and uh, we can show you exactly how uh, how to do it. So as I was saying, we have um, over 100 uh, deployments worldwide. Uh, we are from Spain, so we have uh, uh, many customers in Europe, in Italy, France, Spain, and uh, but we have also grown a lot in the Americas, in the US, Mexico, in Latin America, 
We also have several uh, customers in South Africa, uh, Madagascar, also, and also in the Asian region where we are starting now. Um, we have already uh, several customers in the Philippines and in Vietnam. And now we are trying to address uh, India and the neighboring countries where we think we our application can help. Uh, these are some of our references. You can uh, see in our web some of the comments they've made, uh, why, how they benefit. For instance, uh, in this case, uh, for instance, this uh, customer conspec in the Philippines, uh, they uh, since this is improving the speed of the network, they have fewer customer complaints, and so. Uh, also, they can um, manage uh, heavy traffic in some, and save some bandwidth in some situations. Uh, this other uh, uh, network, Vietnam, Netnam, is a large network there, uh, the first ISP in Vietnam. And uh, they also are using our uh, uh, application. They saw, they saw that with us the, the, when they did the uh, uh, speed tests and all that, their customers were getting higher speeds. Not just that, that simple. This is another customer in the US. Uh, they they had a lot of uh, complaints uh, before us because in some of uh, the customers because Netflix was going slow with us, they uh, that stopped. So this is the way. It's a very visible thing when you implement it. Uh, uh, how you can, uh, but we never know exactly how much. So how much we can optimize one network. So we uh, encourage you to try it because we offer uh, um, a free trial. Uh, so you can, uh, we will uh, allow you to have a temporary license uh, so that you can try it out. Uh, no risk on your side, you're just using some sort of hardware then so your hardware you can then use for somewhere, something else. Uh, and then try it out, see if it improves as much. We are claiming a very high uh, improvements uh, and we are uh, confident that we can provide them so try it out if it works for you then you you can keep it then if not uh, well uh, just uh, uh, no, no commitment uh, for uh, and how if you do decide to keep it these are the prices okay so how do we sell this we the our licensing because the, all the price you have to pay is for the license okay and the license you can buy either perpetual license for just uh, you you've bought it for forever or you can pay a monthly subscription uh, which includes support the, if you buy the, uh, the one off uh, it's also uh, temp, uh, the the first uh, year is uh, uh, so, uh, support is included also so you get uh, free uh, upgrades to new functionality and all that so um after that is 10 percent of the uh, um, uh, traffic uh, of the um, um, of the price every year for support if you want to hire it. Uh, so how is the licensing priced according to the maximum throughput so that it can handle? So there is a 500 megabits license or a one gigabit, two gigabit. If you start uh, and for instance the price for instance for if you get a 500 megabit license it would be 160. Uh, uh, Point uh, sixty-seven uh, dollars. Uh, this would be uh, per month, uh, and if you go to one gigabit, then you just well, go up to this other price. Or the one-off is uh, two thousand nine hundred twenty-one um, USD US dollars um, for five hundred megabits. And then if you then have to upgrade to one gigabit, you pay just the difference. Okay, and the if you're pushing, uh, for instance, imagine you have a network where you have uh, 500 megabits per second and you're getting close to 500, and maybe at some peak times you go over 500 megabits per second. We don't uh, stop traffic or block traffic before, beyond that. It's just we will only optimize up to the, the license uh, uh, that you have in place. The, the rest of the traffic will just be forwarded without any optimization. Okay, so uh, I think with this we have uh, covered all, all the functionality, the implementation, our references. So uh, our, if there are any, if there have been any questions during the Yes, uh, Jose, thank you. We, we, we have received a couple of questions uh, that I want to, uh, to tell you. Uh, first question is if, if it helps, uh, if our solution helps on 
fiber or just on radio access? Oh, okay, yes, no, well, it helps in both cases. Uh, um, because uh, uh, fiber also has many times um, some variability G point networks have certain delay jitter that we uh, confuses TCP a lot. And you have also to have to have in mind that you may be a fiber, completely fiber um, uh, network, but in the end, end users will most of the times use Wi Fi to access the network and Wi-Fi is wireless. So every day and nowadays, almost all, you can consider that all networks have some uh, wireless uh, at, at some point. Okay, there's another question. Uh, if uh, our solution optimizes encrypted traffic. Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, we uh, optimize encrypted traffic just as uh, non-encrypted traffic because we, don't need to go into we don't see what is inside uh, encrypted traffic is on top of tcp so um just we optimize https or http or tls just the same as non-encrypted traffic okay um another question is about uh, what metrics uh, does it show in in the in the in the gui if it shows metrics on accelerations and on traffic limitation Yes, uh, we can show you uh, the amounts of traffic that will is flowing through the network, uh, the the what, how much uh, the the uh, how much it is. Uh, I think it, we have a few graphs here. Um, yeah, we can show you first the, these graphs at what speeds uh, the uh, how much uh, the speed without with and without for different uh, packet sizes for different RTTs. Uh, so we will also show you, you know, what uh, the amount of traffic, how much is got UT, uh, UDP, how much is being optimized, and how much is being shaped. So yes, you can have a lot of uh, online uh, information at, about your network. Okay. Um, one another uh, interested uh, customer asked if our equipment support micro microwave technology. Microtic. Hey, Mi microwave. Yeah. Microwave. Microwave. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, for, for us, uh, really, TCP is really the same. TCP is the basis of the internet. It, we don't uh, care if it is flowing through a microwave uh, or a fiber, whatever. In fact, when we have seen many customers, there's always a mix in the sense that there may be some hops that are uh, with, uh, for instance, microwave point-to-point uh, -point link and uh, in those cases, we can optimize a lot because those also in in all those links uh, in, introduce some variability or packet losses, and that, there is where we can help. If you have a perfect network, I must say we cannot uh, optimize it much. If you are very close, if you're next to uh, all the Netflix or YouTube or whatever, and all the typical services, and you have a fiber and ethernet only and nobody uses wi-fi and you're then that network we will not optimize much because also all uh, tcp can already do very well there we only help we help with real networks where yeah, tcp uh does have pro i mean it works but it's just it's not using the networks uh to the to the extent that it they can be Okay, um, another question is about virtualization, if, if we support uh, virtualized uh, environments. It, right now, no, we are working to, uh, right now we um, only support this on real uh, servers, uh, but we, uh, we are working on um, getting the, uh, so that it works well with, because when, when we have tried it with virtual servers, it doesn't uh, perform as well so we have to solve a few issues and then it will be available but not now okay uh, another question is if uh, our product accelerates content served from nearby caches uh, well when we, that content those contents we accelerate less because there's part of the acceleration that we managed to get is because we make contents available closer and that part will not be there because it's already, I mean, if it, as close uh, we uh, through us than the original server. But there's the part about our t uh, when I describe the three mechanisms. Then the two first mechanisms about getting them close and you know being faster with retransmissions 
will we will not be there will not be a difference between us and the original servers going through uh, directly without us but the third part of, in which the, the, the TCP uh, in those uh, cache servers uh, will still be not as good as ours and so we have managed very uh, some many of the customers uh, the results I was showing before those some of them come from very large networks that have um, Netflix servers right on their promises they were uh, sitting ne right next to our servers and uh, we still got very significant uh, acceleration numbers like I, I think it was a this is the case for instance for this large network with 2.5 million subscribers that I um, this MNO 4G in that case the acceleration is lower maybe 56 percent but we managed a significant uh, improvement even though the servers were sitting right next to our servers okay um there are two last questions that have arrived and one is if the bandwidth management applies to all traffic or only to tcp traffic the bandwidth management applies to all traffic not just tcp that's uh, for instance uh, if you decide uh, versus uh, video streaming there's uh, some part of video streaming that is uh, done through udp this is some part of uh, facebook and youtube uh, typically go through udp uh, we apply to, to both. Yeah. Okay, and one last question is, uh, what is the speed you suggest to limit for video streaming? I guess that, that relates to how can somebody uh, find the right uh, limit to, to video? Yeah, that depends on, on your network in the sense that if it is, uh, for instance, a wireless network, if you have plans that are low versus four megabits uh, or uh, five or 10, that, that amount then uh, a, a typical limit would be somewhere below the plan. For instance, if you have four megabit plans, then three megabit per second. If you have five megabits, uh, we would go with four. And because four megabits per second, for instance, is a very typical value, it still allows for instance, like two good quality uh, <clears throat> streaming uh, sessions at the same time. And of course, you cannot do the limitation above the plans that you have for your users because then it would not do anything it's already limited okay so uh, but if you have for instance a very fast network like we have some networks uh, that have plans for 300 megabits or even 500 megabit uh, plans then in those cases the, the limitations uh, are, that are used are um, higher like the 10 20 megabits per second um, uh, we can work with you to to find uh, to tell you based on our experience with many networks as we say we are over 100 tell you what values we think for your network would be the most uh, and and of course every uh, the the network owners have a, a, a big uh, say in this because they, they know you know what they are offering and what their customers uh, would expect and so we can work with you to get the optimal value okay jose there is just one question that just arrived it's about hardware cost uh, if we can give an idea what you know typical hardware costs well, many of our uh, the the, the uh, servers that we use up to 10 gigabits per second that I was showing, those cost, for instance, uh, in the US or in many countries uh, around this uh, on the left, for up to 10 gigabits, it, uh, this costs around a thousand dollars. Okay, so and it already comes with SFP plus and copper interfaces. Uh, now you can get lower. Uh, like the most basic Dell or HP servers, they can also handle for one gigabit, they will leave more than enough. So you can get reduce it to around 500 um, um, dollars, US dollars. Um, I don't know in, 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 the, in, the, in Indian local currency, but many times what we people even use uh, like secondhand servers or servers that they already have and and so i cannot tell you exactly uh, whatever server you can get not lower than an i5 or i3 uh, intel uh, um, cpu but uh, so the prices can be in the hundreds of us dollars all right so jose i think those were the questions uh, um, so thank you very much for uh, to everybody for for your time uh, we want to just uh, reiterate that we are available at sales at bitcoin.com that you can talk to us and ask for, for a free trial. 
and we'll be very happy to to uh, to offer you that uh, and so you can test it but just uh to finalize uh, keep safe and let's let's uh let's be in touch then thank you very much thank you ben be safe thank you very much bye now